All right, hello, welcome back, fellow coder, to the Fresh Vote series, where we are building a Java web app from scratch, leveraging technologies such as Spring Boot and other wonderful Spring technologies. So, uh, in this lesson, uh, well, in the previous one, we were talking about uh, building out a nav bar, um, and then I talked about wanting to change the color of it because my logo doesn't really pop here. Uh, then I realized I also have a dark version of the logo. I have like one that has instead of the um, the white lettering. I do have one that has black lettering, um, but obviously another solution is just to change the um, the color of uh, the background of the, the nav bar. So I'm going to do that. I could just switch to my black, the black version of the logo, but I could also uh, change the color of the nav bar. So I'm going to do the the, uh, the latter. I'm going to change the color of the nav bar, perhaps to a darker theme, right? So all we have to do is say uh, nav bar dark and BG dark. Okay, so I believe navbar dark, I assume uh, navbar dark will turn the fonts uh, white and sort of a, whatever the lightish gray here is. And then uh, BG dark will change the actual color of the background of the bar. Um, both are necessary because you don't want to have black text with a black background because then the text disappears, right? That's why there's two, two steps to it. <clears throat> so the beauty of leveraging uh, time leaf... Um, what should we call it here? Um, fragments is that all I need to do is change uh, this, the uh, stuff in one place right here. So navbar light and BG light over to navbar dark and BG dark, and auto magically all of my pages will now be updated um, with that navbar. So now when I refresh, hopefully, uh, there you go. Now we have the dark navbar. And uh, if I log in, uh, if I log in, uh, this guy has the, the updated. Um, look and feel. If you go to the home page, this one has the updated look and feel. So they all have uh, been updated, which is lovely. Uh, so good enough. I actually kind of like that. It actually looks pretty, uh, pretty sharp, uh, in my opinion. So I will leave it uh, there. I will also remove these three uh, links here because we don't need these links just yet. Uh, so those will be the home features and pricing. So all, all you see here that they they did. Um, was they created a, let's interesting, they created a div that's, that's a navbar collapse, but I don't see any collapsibility feature. So that's something I'm not exactly sure of why they did that, but I guess that's just um, the way it, it goes. But in here they have an unordered list uh, that they put the um, the links into. So I guess that's this part. And then, um, and then we have the navbar text on the right. If I do comment out the unordered list here, uh, because it has the MR Auto class, this might move the, the text, this text to the left. So that might be an unforeseen circumstance here. If I refresh, the text over here might pop over to the left. We'll see what happens. I could be wrong. Let's refresh. And there you go. I am indeed right. It's always nice when I guess correctly. So as you can see, the text had this unintended consequence of popping over to the left, which is, if you remember from the, from the previous video, not what we wanted to do because we want to have the login button in the top right. So um, one way to possibly fix that is to bring back the unordered uh, list with nothing inside of it. Okay, or maybe even just changing it to a div. I think the important thing here is um, the MR auto class is here. So if I come back and refresh, there you go. Now that pops that pops back to the right. So the MR auto is saying, <clears throat> take the stuff in this div and move it to the, the, the left and everything outside of that will auto automatically be moved to the right. Okay, that's kind of a weird way of doing it. Um, another way that I, I just wanted to play around with this. Let's uh, comment that back out. So then that means this text will jump back over to the, to the left. Let me change this to, um, instead of a nav bar, uh, a div, I will change it to, uh, instead of a span, I'll change it to a div and I will put a button in here with the word login there. Okay. So now it's login and I will add the class btn and I don't know, btn primary. Okay. Uh, so now again, we want that to be on the right hand side. So one possible way of doing it is to say MR or ML auto that might work, might not. I, I'm leaning towards might not, but we'll see. Okay, good. So it did work. The ML auto will put it to the right. Um, so that's cool. I guess that works. I, 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 you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm not sure if we need navbar text though. Because navbar text, 
uh, because we're we're defining the class of the btn and btn primary on the button there's no need to say that anything inside of that is text so it shouldn't change okay so the only thing that changed there is um sort of the height of the nav bar changed just slightly which is fine by me so i, I like the way this is going so you know within five minutes we're going uh, along the right pace one thing that i haven't done is uh, the login button down here is big text I might, might want to make this a BTN, I think it's LG is the class, to make it a bit bigger. Yeah. <clears throat> Do I want a big button? Oh yeah, and then I also have log in as two words. Uh, do I want a big button? I think I'm okay with a big button. Yeah, I think I'm okay with that. So, cool. Now let's take a look at what happens when we shrink the screen. So we want, we want to make sure that it looks okay on mobile. Ah, that's what it is. So when I was saying, um, talking about the collapse functionality, I, I that's what it does. It turns it into this type of functionality where you would click on it and then stuff comes down. Now I've broken that functionality. Stuff does not come down. <sighs> Excuse me. Um, Cause I'm clicking on it and nothing's happening. So let me undo, or no, let me, let me leave my text as is. And let me go back to the, um, uh, bootstrap page and let me look and see what the code was in here um, navbar nav and navbar text so let me do navbar nav and let me just see because maybe I had I need to specify the classes inside as having some sort of navbar prefix for the collapsing functionality to work so I will make this navbar nav this div uh, have this navbar nav class um, when I refresh, nothing visually happens. If I collapse it, okay, and when I click on it, no, still nothing is happening. Hmm, <laughs> What else we have? Collapse, navbar nav, branding. So I see active is the, okay, that's just a class on the, um, whatchamacallit, on the link. So nav link, navbar text. Hmm. MR Auto. Nav items. Well, let's take a look. Let's let's collapse this and see what happens. Okay, so you see the functionality works here. What might need to happen, we might need to bring in JavaScript. It's possible that we need to have the JavaScript version of uh, bootstrap in here in order for it to work or we need to mess around with some classes <clears throat> so let me scroll down and they do have I believe they have a section on oh no they don't I thought they had a section on JavaScript nav bars are responsive by default but you can easily modify responsive behavior depends on our collapse JavaScript plugin okay so I just happened to work, search the, the whole navbar section for the word script, and I happened to hit exactly the point that we need, which is we need the JavaScript plugin. Um, so where is the JavaScript plugin for collapse? If I click on download in the top right, I might be able to find, so there's the popper. If I look for the word collapse, no, on the screen, doesn't exist. So we have the style sheet, we have bootstrap min.js. Do we have bootstrap min included here? So we have jQuery and we have just bootstrap CSS. So we don't have the JavaScript part of bootstrap. So let's bring that in, into our header. Okay, the beauty of having the the uh, header, t uh, the timely f fragments is that we put this script in one place, the uh, JavaScript for bootstrap, and it gets included on, included on every page. So if we refresh here, um, let's see if the collapse works. Okay, no, it's not doing anything. Do I have a, an obvious error in my console? Yeah, what's going on here? <clears throat> so bootstrap cannot read property fn of undefined. Um, so that leads me to believe that there is still JavaScript issues in terms of needing to include more JavaScript files. If you're using our compiled JavaScript, don't forget to include CDN versions of jQuery and popper.js. Um, okay, so 
it's telling us not to forget to include it. Uh, does it have to be after? Perhaps it, it can be after. So we still have the uh, exception. And if I collapse and click, still nothing happens. So it definitely refers to, I referred to something called collapse plugin. So download contents, let's go to JavaScript section. Dependencies, our drop downs, popovers, and tooltips also depend on popper. Okay. All plugins depend on jQuery, so you must have jQuery in there. That's fine, we do. Um, let's look for collapse. Okay. I don't see any reference to needing to have a collapse. JS file. Plugins can be included individually using blah or all at once using bootstrap.js or the minified JS. Don't include both. Yeah, so I definitely have included bootstrap min JS. Okay, so let's just double check and make sure that uh, in the source code it's actually coming in. So bootstrap min JS is here, so it's being uh, brought in, imported as well as um, popper is there. Now jQuery is coming in after those two things, so that could be the, a problem. Maybe jQuery needs to come in first, so I'm gonna move that guy up two spaces. So I'm gonna bring jQuery in first, then bootstrap and popper. Could be a, a, an, 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 blah, blah, an order thing. Okay, so there we go. The error went away, so it's important to bring in jQuery first. Let's hope now when I click on this, there you go, we get the login button. So that's the issue, the order of, of, uh, of scripts matter. Cool, now you know. Knowing is half the battle, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, Login button's kind of massive when you, when you do that, but I guess on a mobile phone, you want it to be big. That's the whole point. You want your buttons and everything to seem exaggerated and large on a mobile phone because um, we all have these fat fingers that we're using to, you know, do stuff with. So there you go. That's working. Unfortunately, that took almost the entire video. Um, I was hoping to do the, the functionality of um, uh, making the login button dynamic here because when we log in, it's still going to say log in, which we don't want it to do that. So uh, in the next video, what I'll do now is um, make it so that the login button is dynamic. So it doesn't always say log in. You'll actually be able to log out once you have logged in. And that for that, we're going to be leveraging um, well, it might take a little while. This is why I'm not doing it in this video. I, I do foresee issues with this coming up and it taking a full 15, maybe more minutes. So that's why we're going to push it to the next video. So again, we're in a situation where we have a beautiful um, header bar here. And remember, like I said, excuse me, you can go to uh, con uh, not content uh, components. You go to nav bar and you can change the color of the nav bar. Um, if you want to change it to something like this, where it has uh, more of a blue background, <clears throat> then you can do the uh, navbar dark BG primary. So again, navbar dark, I'm pretty sure will change the text to be the white color that you see. So the white or lighter gray text and the um, navbar light will make the text dark. Now the BG, you can choose any of the colors you want, you know, based on the classes that they have, I assume. Um, there's primary, secondary, um, info, all those things. Uh, I assume you can do that. Let's put, put my money where my mouth is and, and turn it to uh, BG uh, info, for example, which is kind of like a turquoise color. Um, yeah, so it's like turquoise color, or you can do BG uh, danger, which I believe is, is red. Yeah, and then BG warning, which is like a yellow, and then you can have secondary, which is like a darker gray, um, the darker gray kind of works, um, but BG dark is an even darker, oh, uh, sorry, BG light. Uh, hold on. No, BG dark. Wasn't that what it was? Yeah, BG dark. Why did BG dark? Dark. Maybe I spelled it wrong. 
yeah, I just spelled it wrong. Uh, it's a, even a, a darker gray. So you can sort of mess around with that. Um, if you want to see the whole list of, of colors and whatnot, I think it's in alerts has, uh, yeah. So um, you can see all of the, so primary, secondary, success, danger, warning, info, light, dark. So those are all the different classes that you can use for uh, the standard bootstrap type colors. These, these are all, um, you know, based on these words uh, right here. Cool. Cool. So thank you so much. Uh, always before you leave, if you really enjoyed this video, please do give me uh, the like on the video if you're watching this on YouTube. Outside of YouTube, I don't know what button you need to hit to show your appreciation for the video, uh, but I would love obviously to like. If you have questions about this, if I went over something too quickly, I would love to hear about it in the comment section. Again, assuming there is one if you're watching this on YouTube. And uh, finally, I would love to have you subscribe to the channel. If you like this kind of content, you want to see more of it, you know what to do. All right. Thanks very much, guys. Take care of yourself. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Happy learning. Bye for now.